Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahee, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon, and contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and Day Spring Discussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Friday, everyone. It is Friday. I hope you got some good plans for this weekend. We got a great show here for you today. Today, I am joined by none other than the Dark Knight himself, Mr. Jaime Medina. How's it going? All right, guys. So I brought Jaime in because he is a DC specialist, and we got some DC stuff we're going to talk about. Tuesday was the season finale of Young Justice Outsiders, the show on DC Universe. We're going to talk about that. I also want to get your thoughts about the new season of Titans coming out afterwards as well, so we will talk about that. But first... Let's jump into the newest trailer for The Joker. Film stars Joaquin Phoenix comes out October 4th. And new trailer just popped up a couple days ago. Jaime, you just watched it for the first time. What do you think? It's a different perspective on Joker. I believe in this film they're trying to kind of bring it into focus as the Joker is Bruce Wayne's brother in some kind of way. Like, I've seen different... uh, clips of it of bringing you know Bruce Wayne into it and Thomas Wayne into it so it's just a different perspective of the Joker I'm not too fond of it right now yeah yeah just yeah. because you know like I I am a DC uh, character fanatic so I mean there's different portrayals of the Joker this one I'm still trying to figure out which way they're trying to go with it yeah for me it's almost well because they're trying to do I think more of a realistic uh, take much like kind of the Dark Knight did because in the Dark Knight you had Heath Ledger's Joker trying to take Batman to his breaking point you know it's like you're one bad day away from being me that kind mm-hmm. of that phrase and that's what kind of the story is where Joaquin Phoenix he's just an average guy who uh, one day has his breaking point and kind of snaps is what it is I mean you could almost see this Joker becoming the Joker we see in the Dark Knight yeah. a little bit too uh, my problem with it though is if you're looking at the entire like you know, DC timeline, so to speak. In this one, you have Thomas Wayne, uh, his dad, who I think is the guy who punches him out. Yes. I believe so, yeah. So anyway, so at this point, you got to assume that Bruce Wayne is at least a little kid. I mean, by the time Batman becomes Batman, you know, Joker's going to be an elderly man. So that's what I hated about Gotham. Exactly. Gotham, you had, you know, the, the, he was a kid, and all his rogues gallery were, were grown-ups, and I'm like, well, by the time he comes Batman, they're all going to be in their 60s. No wonder he kicks the crap out of them. Exactly. And the only one that was actually his age in Gotham was Selina Kyle. Yeah. Because obviously they have a love interest, and mm-hmm. so they carried that. They portrayed that, would, that. That, would, that would just be horrible if she was 60. <laughs> <laughs> that would definitely not be good. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I, it's one of those things with this. It's a different kind of comic book film, much like how Logan was, yes. uh, much like, you know, The Dark Knight was, where it's not just bang bang shoot them up or just you know jokes or you know that that little confine that most people see superhero and comic book films in it's one of those films that kind of could transcend the genre yeah. i would say a little bit now uh the director todd phillips was talking to la times and he was talking about the film and how it, you know he had to get it made and stuff like that he had to convince warner brothers to let him do an r-rated joker film because uh, one of the quotes you know it's like you realize we sell joker pajamas at target you know joker he's down to like lego batman through cartoons yeah. and stuff like that and then he was talking about you know, his pitch and he said quote i've been offered a few years few over the years speaking about comic book films and my thing was always i don't watch those movies it's not because i don't think it's cool it's just like quite frankly frankly they're always so loud it was just never something i imagined doing it really came from this idea if you just did a comic book movie differently we all grew up on these character studies and they're few and far between nowadays so it was like let's do a deep dive into one of these guys in a real way no one is flying around. No buildings are going to collapse. It's just going to be on the ground, so to speak. What do you think about his comments? I mean, for this movie specifically, I, it plays with it perfectly mm-hmm. um, because that's exactly what he's doing. There's no action. It's more of a dramatic yeah. movie Again, instead of a character study. Yeah. Instead of you know action based like we're used to with Batman versus Superman, mm-hmm. Batman, whatever the case is. Um, I mean, this movie specifically. It's just taking it into a whole another perspective, 
And I think if they do it the proper way, you'll get a great movie compared to the other ones that we've seen where mm. spectacles, you know, you know, they're okay. But then once they release the unedited version, it's a lot better. So yeah. I'm tired of seeing those <laughs> and I prefer an actual good right? movie. <laughs> yeah. They just released a trailer for the new like Spider-Man far from home with seven minutes of additional footage. I'm like, you expect me to pay another 12 bucks to go see seven <laughs> minutes. Exactly. Come on, man. Forget that. But with this one too, again, it's one of those things where, I think transcends a little bit, looks like, and, you know, I could definitely see some Oscar potential in this film as well. And, again, you got to think about it. Like he said, Joker is the type of character that he's a comic book character, so you got to be careful how you treat it and how Warner Brothers, you know, is very protective of Batman. I mean, Batman is to Warner Brothers what, you know, Spider-Man is to Sony. It's oh, exactly. it's, it's their number exactly. one. It's their cast. Yeah, they got to protect the property and all the ones surrounding it. Um, but, you know, again, when he comes to this, it's kind of like I remember with Deadpool, when the first mm-hmm. Deadpool movie came out. And I'm sitting there, and I know what Deadpool is. I know what this film's going to be. And I see these, like, dads bringing their, like, 11, 10-year-old kids. Like, oh, it's a comic book movie. You know, it'll be all right. Completely Exactly. <laughs> but, with the, you know, it, they saw the action. They saw the, uh, the laughs on the trailer. So you get that perspective. With this, it's a little different because... If you if a dad watched this trailer, I mean, you could definitely see it's not a kid's movie. And it's not supposed to be It's not supposed to be. Movie. I don't think a kid would even like this movie. No, not at all. Not at all, exactly. There's no going to be no real action and stuff like that. It's going to be, I think, a, more of a social commentary on, you know, society and what it does to a guy like Arthur Flick and, you know, a guy who reaches his breaking point, so exactly. to speak. I'm not, again, I'm not a huge fan of doing a villain film without the hero because I think the most interesting thing about, you know, heroes and villains are their relationships with each other and Joker's relationship with Batman, much like the Dark Knight explored it, thought it did a great job. So having no Batman in it, I'm not keen on it, but just the character study of a person reaching his breaking point and what that does sounds interesting to me. Most definitely. And if they do decide to make another Joker film... I'd rather see more of a live-based version of A Killing Joke. Yeah, yeah. That was a great animated movie. Mm-hmm. I believe it would be a great live movie if they actually did it. Yeah, that's true. So, And that could also be another rated R movie, too. <laughs> right? I know. I think they could... They could they, Deadpool and Logan have proven rated R comic book movies can work, but I hate the people who are like, oh, well, we're going to make a rated R, so it's going to be good. Don't do that. Make a good movie and then give it a rating. You know, yeah. you, the the MPAA makes the rating. Just make a good movie. Let them rate the movie, yeah. so to speak. So, But, yeah, that comes out October 4th, so you guys can uh, take a look at that. And, of course, fire back on the social media groups and Gmail account. Let me know what you think about it. All right, so we're going to spend most of the rest of this episode talking Young Justice Outsiders or Young Justice Season 3, as you would call it. Now, this one premiered. Uh, what was it, back in January. January, And it was the return of Young Justice. The show came out in 2010, had two seasons on Cartoon Network, and then was canceled, actually. Through a lot of, you know, fan cries and love, uh, when they were bringing up the DC Universe streaming, they decided to bring it back, uh, making, hoping it would be, you know, one of the new popular shows, one of the shows that they could launch with. It's already got a, had a fan base to it. So, you know, some people were going to watch it. And it premiered. They had a couple episodes at a time, which I super enjoyed, to where you got like three episodes at a time. So I would come home on Friday nights, watch about an hour of it, you know, and then that was like, you know, a little mini movie, almost as long as it takes to watch an episode of Arrow or something like that. So that was really cool. They took a little hiatus, came back, and I believe it was June or so. When was it? July. They came back and they did a couple episodes, then they went to single episodes, but then this last week they finished off the final season with three episodes all at once. 26 episodes this season. I feel like it's quite a bit. It was, it was quite a bit. I mean, they could have probably brought it up into two different seasons, but, yeah. you know, this just sets it up for yeah, season which four. They, they agree they are going to do a season four. They announced the Comic-Con season four is coming, which I'm excited about as well. So, let's just go into it. Let's go. Give me your overall thoughts on this season about justice young justice outsiders that spit it out uh overall thought a uh, great season um they brought in a couple of different elements in the beginning that kind of threw everybody off trying to figure out what's going on with it but towards the uh, towards the middle of it and towards the end of it everything came together and i thought it yeah. was I, overall i think it was a great season that, the way that they could have yeah done. i mean i really for me like you know and what i hate like say like say the cw 
um, shows, you know, they're on network TV, so they have to be like 20, 22 episodes per season, and you get a lot of filler episodes, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things. And with this, you had 26 episodes, but most of them I kept engaged. You know, there wasn't one or two episodes maybe I wasn't too crazy on that I might consider filler episodes, but for the most part, I enjoyed almost all of them. Um, and of course, adding the new characters, to be honest, I wasn't a big fan of a lot of the characters they added. Yeah, uh, Forger, I didn't really... Oh, I man, I love Forger, man! <laughs> um, Forger, fed bug! <laughs> and then, um, you know, uh, Geoforce. Geoforce, he, he was, he's I mean, got he, some stuff, yeah. That boy's got some anger issues. Yeah, I mean, that one, I mean, he was okay. He wasn't a great character that mm -hmm. I think of. And then the way that they ended it with him made it kind of, okay, this is what they were building mm -hmm. up to. Now I see why they did it the way yeah. they did it. Yeah, and also, of course, with this season, Black Lightning was a big driving force. Of course, you see at the end of the season what happened. And of course, guys, I thought I forgot, spoilers. If you haven't seen the season finale, of course, you're going to get spoiled. So pause, come back, listen to us after you've watched the season finale because we're not holding back here, okay? <laughs> we don't hold back. All right, so yeah, Black Lightning was a big driving force for the season. I mean, it started with him, you know, on a, a planet killing a kid, so to speak, yep. and kind of, you know, force it caused him to quit the Justice League, but then get recruited by Nightwing into his little stealth team. At the end of the season, it came full circle where, we, where he became the new leader of the not only the Justice League, really, but the new leader of all the heroes, exactly. it seemed like. Because the team, the Outsiders, the League, they're all working together mm -hmm. um, with all of that. So it seemed that you watch Black Lightning on CW? I do. I the, haven't watched this last season, but I have okay, I've watched Okay, it. so, well, there's only one season. No, there's two. Is there two? Oh, there is two. My bad. Yes. Okay, I'm behind. Anyway, so yeah. Okay, just minor spoiler. But at the end, the uh, the government guy, I forget the the black guy, old, you know, glasses or whatever. He go he comes to the Pierce home and basically warns them of Markovia creating metahumans mm -hmm. and like says you guys are our best defense against them so to speak and it's interesting that you go from that over the cw to over to this where you know not only black lightning a main character in this season but you know they're talking markovia and metahumans mm -hmm. and like the similarities just between the two shows and what they're doing on each network yep. really it's, it's very interesting but but with the season two of course we got our new characters um but you saw in the end it kind of came down to violet and cyborg yeah so how do you feel like as far as those two characters, because one was basically possessed by a father box, one mm -hmm. was possessed by a mother box, so to speak, and they became very crucial. And they said they're very crucial moving on because Darkseid's still out there. Yeah. You know, he's still coming, uh, so to speak. So how do you feel those two characters and how they interacted in this season? Uh, the way that they interacted in the season, I mean, obviously Cyborg didn't come in until probably midway, Halfway, yeah. midway through the season. Um, and it in, it took him all the way to the very last episode for him to figure out his exact powers mm -hmm. and what he can do and different ways that he can manifest um, the father box to you know to his capabilities. Uh -huh. um, Halo, I mean, she was, yeah. she was awesome. I was she like, was, uh, she was like you a know, little kid the whole time. She was yeah, she was that little innocent one who in the end saved them all. Of yeah. course, the one they were all after. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as a character herself, of course, they, they threw in the twist in the middle there where, you know, you come to find out in her previous life, she was the one that let in the assassins that yeah. killed Breon's and Tara's parents uh, with that. So, you know, she lived with that guilt. And just the Breon uh, Violet relationship, I wasn't really digging as much as, say, some of the other relationships, yeah. uh, so to speak. So with that, I'm like, eh, whatever. I think they kind of just threw that in there just to be like, let's see what happens. Let, let's see what happens, <laughs> yeah, too. And, of course, she threw in Tara, which, you know, when, when you bring in Tara, of course, you're thinking Judah's contract. Yeah. So as soon as you bring in a character like that, you know that's where they were going, uh, her connection to Deathstroke. And I like... I like where they went with her, though, of course, you know, oh, yeah. kind of like in Judas Contract where she didn't pull the trigger, mm -hmm. so to speak. You know, she didn't go full. And I loved it at the end, too, where, you know, you got these group of – you got Batman, okay? You got Batman, okay? And someone, several people, if not, are, you know, betraying the, the league, the team, or whatever, okay? Batman and his – Proteges, Nightwing, Robin, especially Nightwing, since he was so close to the team and working with them, 
you know he knows something's up, okay? Oh, yeah. You don't put yeah. one over on Batman or Nightwing, I don't think, yeah, you know? Exactly. They're, they're, they're not like that, of course. So you come to find out that they knew about Tara from before they even picked her up or rescued her, yeah. so to speak. Um, so that, I, I like that aspect of it. Like, yes, we will, you knew you were working with Deathstroke, but we wanted you to trust us, to come to your own conclusions. Uh, so I enjoyed that aspect of the character, and she did make the right decision, rather than her brother, Brian, who did not make the right decision. <laughs> um, but yeah, Brian, of course, um, let's talk about this guy. Geoforce, he was a big whiny baby. The entire season... These- and then at the very end, he's just like, you know what, screw it. I'm going to kill my uncle. I'm uh-huh. be done with it. Well, he was pressured, though, too, because, you know, he did have what, whatever the one guy was. He was working with the light, that's true. of course. So that's why he was there to push Breon over the edge. He had the mob, and that's why he killed his uncle, which, of course, the rest of the team couldn't get behind. I mean, it's not like they don't kill but it's, you know, it's cold-blooded murder, you know, yeah, exactly. killing someone because they're coming at you with a gun or, you know, a sword or whatever is different than having someone, you know, trapped in rocks and just, you know, basically murdering them, <laughs> so to speak. So that's what the, the team was against. Uh, even his own sister couldn't be behind that. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's going to play a big part in season four mm-hmm. because obviously Markovia and if you look at the light. They're saying everything went better than planned. So yeah. Obviously, this is going to play a big part in the upcoming season, which I'm looking forward to. Of course. I did not see him actually killing somebody. Yeah. You know, I think you in think because he's you know he he matured as the season went on. Exactly. So you didn't think he was going to you know do it, but he ended up did doing it, and you know well then there was the other character of course at the end you saw standing beside him was the doctor lady. What was her name? I forget what her name was trying to look at the list here i don't see her anywhere but yes the one who you end up i was always sketchy of her too you know throughout the whole season i always knew that she, there wasn't something quite right about her like the way she was you know hanging on violet and Brian. uh i'm not yeah. seeing her name but anyway yeah the doctor we'll call her the doctor and you know how she finally revealed herself to everyone and you know kind of you know what her plan was um she totally seduced Jefferson, so you know, not a bad way to go, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was a good, like I said, it was a good storyline from yeah. from the get go, um, and that's one thing that we miss from the animated series that you know we grew up to. There was yeah, the Justice League. There was story, there was there was. I mean, this is those. yeah, it's more mature. Exactly. As it kind of because I love the old Justice League, you know, animated <laughs> series definitely, but this is more mature. I mean, you have you know the the, the scene of Jefferson and the Doctor in bed, you yeah. know, after just you know making Whoopi. <laughs> obviously is what it was so you had that but also you know going to that aspect as well with black lightning um that guy's so naive <laughs> i mean he got he got the wool poter, pulled over his eyes with the team with the doctor and that's one of the things too is he, he the whole season he was taking that moral high ground and i'm sorry man but as leader of a bunch of superheroes that's not going to fly. I think he's going to face some big struggles and have to, you know, get a reality check, so Most to speak. Most definitely. And at the same time, I feel like everybody's trying to push Nightwing to take over uh, as Batman as well. Yeah. And I think Batman's trying to do the same thing for him, and they're trying to, like, guide him into it, mm-hmm. which we all know later on he does. Yeah, he does Batman, don the cape and cow in the comics. It's just a matter of does he want to in this series? Yeah, well, you go back to season one, too. That's what I loved is, you know, at the, they had the, the episode in season one where they had the vision of all of them, of the heroes die, so it's just the team to defend the Earth. And, you know, they end up going through a lot of trauma and losing each other. And, you know, they go through the therapy sessions with Black Canary. And uh, Dick Grayson is sitting there, and he's like, oh, I always thought I'd grow up and I'd be Batman. And he's like... I don't want to be the Batman, yeah. you know? So that's why he split off to become Nightwing, you know? So that I love that aspect of it, too. Here's what it is, is when you're dealing with a group like The Light, okay? They're all about deception and, you know, public, twain public opinion and, you know, misguiding people, so to speak, okay? They play dirty, okay? Which is why Batman and Nightwing and Barbara and all them had to play a little bit secretive, okay? Mm -hmm. And Black Lightning's like, no more secrets, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, grow up. Grow up, man. Come on. You're dealing with the light, okay? They are all about deception and, and all that stuff. So you have to sometimes fight fire with fire. And the fact that that character took that moral high ground the entire season kind of bugged me. (laughs) I mean, it was a good way for, you know, they had to root for somebody during this uh, this series. Mm -hmm. With Black Lightning, I think it was just 
that's who they were focusing on. That's mm-hmm. what they wanted to do. They wanted to at least have one member of the Justice League or Young Justice up there, you know, saying we're not going to do this and end up, you know, just keeping him going the whole way. Yeah, exactly. You got to keep that, you know, that, that character like that. Okay, so let's get to the team, the core team, man. That later episode when they, you know, were on their mission, you had Calder and Connor and McGon and Artemis and Dick. Uh, obviously, we're missing Wally, but you know we'll get to that in just a sec. I loved seeing them back together again oh, too. Definitely. I was that was that was a great one. There's a shot in the, I think it was the last episode of all five of them standing next to each yeah. other, and I I love that shot too, uh, which is great. But how let's focus on them as far as how they have matured. So starting off, let's go with Calder, Aquaman. He's not longer Aqualad. He's Aquaman now. Mm. Arthur Curry is back in Atlantis just being king he's not Aquaman anymore Mm -hmm. Calder's taking that mantle and he's also co-leader of the Justice League next to Wonder Woman and of course we come to find out that he's also you know he likes the guys too which you know no more power to him exactly that's fine so what did you think about what he did because he started off very like distant in this season but as the season went on he had to get put him back to the fold mainly because he was in on the whole cahoots thing there too but back with his friends and with that how do you see his storyline in this season uh his storyline in the season was it was okay Mm -hmm. um i don't see anything that was too extravagant that you know put him outside of his box Mm -hmm. i think he was more there the way that they brought him in to being you know showing his lover at the end mm-hmm. you know, that was yeah that was pretty i think cool. yeah it was kind of um, the the big thing of course obviously a lot of people are going to focus on it oh, yeah, for yeah. the season and you know it was one of those things where as the leader of the justice league he had to compromise a exactly, little bit exactly. so which i think black light needs to get to learn uh that little lesson but i liked his new outfit too with like the gold on it and yeah. stuff like that yeah. uh he's definitely a good character and i want to see more of what he does because in you know the last season invasion he was a big part of that because he was the mole mm-hmm. the infiltrator so he was definitely in there pretty deep in that season more distant this season but of course he came back because i liked how again at the end they all kind of the team kind of started out a little bit apart and they all kind of gravitated back towards each other which was great yep. for that. All right, uh, Connor and Megan, or Ms. Martian and Superboy, they're engaged, still engaged, thankfully. Yeah. I was very curious because the way their relationship was going in this season, I thought for a minute there they might kill one of them off. Yeah, I honestly. Had this, I had the same feeling. Yeah, because, you know, you had Artemis and Wally in season two that seemed very happy together, and, you know, that, that kind of ended badly. So with this one, you had those two where it started off good, but then, of course, Connor learns about... Um, again, being in cahoots with Batman and all them, mm-hmm. so the trust issue comes up, which is something they might thought you might not be able to get past, but they do get past it. And of course, Connor stepping up and you know basically outing Lex Luthor. Yeah, he steps up and be like, you know, he's stepping up for saying, hey, I'm I'm half Superman, I'm half Lex Luthor. Test my blood. Yeah. You'll see that Lex Luthor's a piece of crap, you know, <laughs> pretty much. And then he's also talking about you know bringing the genomorphs yeah. into the limelight as well foragers about that and that's really again with the season outsiders was all about you know the whole outsiders thing was taking you know a group of medics metas like beast boy and all them and showing them that they're not a danger so to speak exactly. and at the end that's what came to as well you know uh, fred bug revealed himself to his classmates as forager mm-hmm. uh, superboy revealed the genomorphs to the to the world and about stepping out into the light not being afraid of who you know we they are and showing them that they're not a danger to the people yeah, I, I mean, I love that. Um, I like you said. I honestly thought either Connor or Ms. Martian were gonna die. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, at the same time, felt like, you know, McGann, she was stepping out into her own, mm-hmm. and Connor just wanted to stay back. He yeah, didn't exactly. Want anything to do with any of it? Yeah, he was just like, I'm yeah, here, he was. But that's yeah, it. But then again, they see they established in that first couple episodes too about how Superman was off world, you know, doing yeah. stuff. So Connor really had to step up, and then at the end. He did step up yeah. too, so and I love that how he made us. He asked Superman to be his best man yeah, in the wedding yeah, too. I thought we were gonna get maybe get the wedding at the end of the season too. I feel like they're gonna put that toward if they for season four. I feel like that's gonna be either the uh, second episode or maybe the third, and then yeah. something dramatic is yeah. gonna happen with like Markovia well when you have there, a you know. when you have a superhero wedding, villains always crash the exactly, wedding, so, so you, you can't can't go <laughs> as planned, of course, with that. So. All right, and then Artemis. So Artemis, it's two years later. She's still kind of reeling from Wally's death, but 
get Recruitser into the team to help him out. And I think Dick realizes that, you know, it's going to be therapeutic for her to Mm -hmm. keep her busy, get her back into action and, you know, help mentor these younger kids as well. And, you know, she she dealt with, you know, maybe the action towards the beginning. And at the end, you got to more the deeper roots, of course, the second to last episode where she wants to go and talk to Wally and, you know, have this vision of the life they could have had. Um, But ultimately, her friends try to talk her out of it i mean the whole thing was a deception yeah is yeah. what it was too but i also love too you know what you had your your core team going back to season one you started off with mcgann and the four guys and then you added artemis which was the six of them for most of that first season mm-hmm. but it, then towards the end of the season you added rocket and zantana so by the end of the season you had four guys and four girls well then of course artemis uh in this season she wants to talk to wally she talks to zantana but then you also have rocket and and McGann there, her other close friends, the basic, the core four girls, mm-hmm. I would I would think, um, her best friends that kind of there to support her, if not talk her out of it. Um, but then, do you think this closes the book on any chance of Wally coming back? I do not. No? You feel... I, I feel... I, I mean, you have to look at it through, you know, different perspectives. Me, personally, I feel like Wally might end up coming back. Somehow, some way, he's going to end up showing up, and then that's just going to change the whole perspective on the, the outsiders. I mean, yeah, he's going to come back. Who knows what Artemis is going to do? Mm-hmm. Um, she, you know, she'll probably try to talk to him, and then she'll find out that her friends deceived her mm-hmm. by, yeah. you know, faking the whole talk yeah. to Wally West kind of thing. Oh, yeah, that would be bad. You know what I mean? That would so be bad. That's going to that's gonna change everything up, so mm-hmm. that might change her from talking to them to secluding herself to being just with Wally so Mm -hmm. I still feel like there's a way to bring him back into it and at the same time get a good story out of it yeah that's true but yeah she I I think you know as a character like I said that was kind of her main point was her moving on from Wally this season which she has but again it it could come back to bite her friends in the ass because if she are if she uh already moved on from him who knows she might be in a relationship if they yeah, decide well, to bring him yeah back. I mean they tried to hook her they up tried to, they did with Red Arrow yeah um, I mean that just with Ron that really <laughs> with Roy yeah out. with Roy that didn't really work <laughs> out I get it it's funny though too because like you have you have Roy you have um uh, who was the original Guardian I think they what his name is now too wait a minute okay I'm trying to get a freak because you have basically three guys that all look the same yeah and you know you had the, the episode where they're all in the security team or whatever and then towards the end there I had trouble like trying to keep them apart yeah. because Red Arrow he has the beard I get that mm-hmm. but the other two I think look exactly the same yeah. almost so it was hard for me to kind of differentiate them a little I bit think too. One was skinnier and the other one was a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much what it was. So, but yeah, so yeah, so that's Artemis, and of course, finding out you have Nightwing, Dick Grayson, who you know again was very central to the season in you know bringing together the team and you know bringing together the outsiders really. Um, and you know, I've been a fan of the Dick Grayson character in the comic. He's one of my favorite characters in comics just because of his evolution and what he's gone through. Uh, so, you know, I love him in this. He's to me my main character, my favorite character. Um, but also with this, too, you also, you know, see his relationship with Barbara mm-hmm. and stuff, too. And I love the um, where they had the, the, the communications with Oracle pretty much, where yeah. they had the eyelids on and they were talking to each other. They had like the symbols on the side, too, and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. But. Barbara's in a wheelchair. Last season, she was Batgirl. Now she's Oracle. Are we assuming, of course, the events of Killing Joke took place? We have to. Oh, yeah. That's the only way we can assume that because that could also be why you know everything's happening the way it is. Um, I mean, we did take a two-year hiatus from yep. season two to season three. Uh-huh. A lot of stuff happens in that two years, so we have to assume that the killing joke has already happened. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's why Dick stepped away from like the team and exactly. all that too. So yeah, it could be, could be, but I like, I like their relationship too, of course. So we'll see how that progresses. Okay. Guys, so let's talk about possible futures. Obviously they tease it at the very end. You saw the waitress with the Legion ring. Mm-hmm. So you're thinking that's what's coming, I'm, you know, I'm, in, I'm in the next season. that's what happens. So what do you think? Okay, because obviously from season one to season two, they jump five years. Season two to season three, they jump two years. How far a jump we getting? Uh, I feel like we're probably going to get another five to ten years. Um, I think ten years would be too much, though. Well, not necessarily, because at the same token, if they're portraying the Legion ring right now, 
the le- the legionnaires had the uh, capability to time travel, uh-huh. so they can go back it as far as they need uh-huh. to. So they could show, you know, kind of like how Arrowverse is doing. Where yeah, they had a lot of um, Oliver Queen showing all these little, you know, backtracks of what happened to him yeah. back then. Five I mean, years. They can go. They can do the same thing. Yeah. The, in Young Justice. Yeah, and it's one of those things, of course, where you know you're dealing with time travel, much like how Bart came back. Um, last season to try to repair the future, maybe have some Legionnaires coming back to, you know, fix some mm-hmm. stuff as well. I Like, again, the big threat, Darkseid, is still out there. Yeah. So, And another thing also is we could be looking at Supergirl showing up. Yes, I could see that definitely uh, popping up, adding another member. Because, yeah, because there are certain characters, you know, they still haven't added, much like um, they haven't added uh, Starf- Starfire, Starfire or uh, Raven, you know. Yeah. They haven't added those characters. And Especially Starfire, since she is an alien, mm-hmm. intergalactic, of course. Going with this, which what do you think of Adam Guy Gardner in this season? Uh, I, you know, it caught me by surprise. Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to show up already. Yeah, it's one of the things they didn't add until mid season yeah, too. I was I wasn't expecting him to show up, but when he did, I was like, okay. Yeah, he he was happened. he was cracking the joke. He was Guy Gardner. You know, totally what you would expect him to be. Yeah, Legion coming up, and it's it's gonna be. I'm I'm very excited for season four. Yeah, obviously the what how season three ended. I liked it a lot. Uh, what they did with it. Um, I want to say compared to the other seasons, what's your favorite season so far? You think season three? Season three. Time. I think two might be my favorite, honestly. But I don't know. It's hard because I like season one too because. Uh, much like you know, going back to say the Joker trailer, it's a small, compact story yeah. with, and that's re- that's one of the reasons I think Deadpool works so well too, because it's a very small story, very compact. And again, season one, you just had those little bit of characters. Uh, season two, it expanded out to even bigger. Season three, expanding even more. Which mm-hmm. obviously, season four, we're going to expand even more on top yeah. of that. Um, so, but I don't know. I mean, I, I've enjoyed them all. Uh, season three, I think I'm out to rewatch because I've rewatched season one and season two so many times. Yeah. Uh, I've only rewatched. I've rewatched the first half of season three, but I need to go back and rewatch the whole season to see how it compares to the other seasons. But yeah. I did enjoy it, and I am excited for season four. Yeah, me so too. We got that. All right. So, but let's talk about some other Titans. And next Friday, Titans season two coming back. And what's what I've loved about DC Universe is when one show ends, the, another season starts. Oh, and that's what is I what love. it is. Like you know, they go from they go from Titans, then they went to Doom Patrol, then they went to Young Justice, then they went to you know Swamp Thing, and so now, so now that Young Justice is over, they they, they want to keep you watching. You yeah, know, they have yeah, they they have all the archive stuff, but their original stuff they want you to keep watching. And Titans season one. I enjoyed, but again, it's going back to Nightwing. He's one of my favorite DC characters, one of my favorite comic book characters. And the fact that Dick Grayson is the star of this, not only the star, but it's in the in the spot where he's going through a big crisis, you know, identity yeah. crisis in his life. And man, I would love to see him put on that Nightwing costume. I, I, would, I, I thought at the end of season one, maybe. I, but. I told you, I told you this last year when we, you know, when it ended. I want him to be Nightwing. I uh-huh. want him to become Nightwing. Yeah. Um, the way that they brought in Jason Todd, I already uh-huh. assumed that they were going to throw him in as a Nightwing. I totally okay. I told, so, time out. I totally forgot. Go backing up a little bit. Let's go back to that one episode of Judge and Justice where they they showed Red Hood. They showed Baby Damian Wayne too. Exactly. As a Batman fan, do you think they're going to play with any of that in season four? I, I hope to God they do. Think think because of, at the same but time again, they also have him. They also showed um, the. Um, the assassins. They showed all yeah. the assassins. Well, okay. So it's like so. If your idea they jump to ten C ten years in the future, they could easily set Damien up as Robin at that time. Exactly. So there you go. And, that's, and here uh, in the new season, we're going to get all these new characters that we weren't even thought of in season one. So we're now we're going to get Connor. Mm-hmm. They uh, hinted at Crypto at the end. Yeah, of season Yeah, those one. two are coming. Yeah. Um, Raven's now actually starting to yeah uh, doing her get, thing. Get her She's, powers and stuff. Well, they got to wrap up season one, like you know, because yeah. the season one ended on a cliffhanger where everyone's in that dream sequence from Trigun. Mm-hmm. And if I remember correctly, what happens in the comics is that the jewel in her eye is her father. She traps her yeah, father she traps in her that. Man. Is what it is. So that's why how she gets the jewel. And, I mean, they're also bringing out um, Aqualad's coming Aqualad's in. Aqualad's coming in, uh, and then they also have um, Girl Ravager. Ravager. De- Deathstroke family is pretty much coming. Yeah, I mean, it's like I'm so excited for this season two to. And, yeah, um, and they got the new, so the new trailer came out, and the way they got, of course, they're setting up looks like with the poster, of course, that Deathstroke's going to be the main villain. He's yes. always been a big Titans villain because his whole thing is, you know, his his 
kids are heroes, were titans. One of them died, so that's why he's like, you know, kids shouldn't be heroes, and he tries, basically tries to kill the titans to yeah. stop them, is what he's trying to do. Um, and they're hinting at kind of the original titans, where you had uh, Robin and Wonder Girl, Hawk and Dove, and probably Aqualad, that shot where they're all walking out. I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. that's like a flashback scene. Uh, something happened to splinter that group, and now that they see that the Titans are forming back together, as Jason Todd so eloquently said on TV, uh, Deathstroke sees that, and he's like, nope, not on my watch. Yep. And that takes him out of a, a retirement, possibly, and uh, you know, he, he's hunt down some Titans, so But at speak. the same time, now that also makes you want to think, does Jason Todd join the Titans, or is are we actually going to see Dick Grayson put on the Robin suit again? Because in the trailer, they also show... Dick Grayson holding the Robin I, suit, putting it back. Together. I think it was a flashback because I think there's that one shot where like you have um, Donna Troy, Robin, Hawk and Dove. They're in like this little case thing or whatever. It's all like the same spot where they're standing there, and I think that's like a montage of like the flashback where it has all of them suiting up and then they walk out. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So because I don't know, think I don't think we're, he's going to put the Robin back costume back on. And I'm also interested to, interested to see how they portray Bruce Wayne in this because oh yeah, at dude. the same time we have Captain Friends zone yes as bruce wayne yes so but at the same time they're not focusing on batman it's more focused on bruce wayne himself yeah so they're not going to show him as i don't think batman. they're gonna, no they they're won't show him in the show, costume they're not going to show him in the back they might show I, him so, the that's what i said do you think they're gonna show him in the back cave they'll show him in the back cave but they won't necessarily show him as batman they'll probably show him as bruce wayne mm-hmm. um but i feel like they're gonna show the relationship between Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne uh-huh. a lot more than what they did last season. I'm curious, now that they're bringing in Bruce Wayne, I want to see, because I'm sure if, if I was Dick Grayson, the first questions I would have for Bruce is like, dude, Jason Todd, really? Well, and that, and <laughs> if you uh, rewatch one of the um, trailers, I believe uh, Dick Grayson is like, you already re- replaced me. Uh-huh. And that's one of the mm. things that he says he to Bruce. To, and yeah. it's like... Like in that, that just yeah. itch, it the conversation the two of them, yeah. you know, have could be very interesting. Just you know, not only in comic books, but just from season one in the relationship they had. So totally understandable. So that's coming out on Friday, which is my wedding anniversary too. So I told, <laughs> I told Lisa, I'm like, look, when we get to the hotel because we're going away for the weekend. Like we get to the hotel once we sell in. Sometime that night, I got to sit down and watch Titans. <laughs> Sorry, babe. It's just, it's got to happen. So, but, but I love too the fact that we're good. We do weekly. Like, you know, like this today, you had Netflix come out with their new Dark Crystal show. Mm-hmm. You also had Amazon come out with another sci fi show, Carnival Row. Now, Disney Plus just announced that they're doing, um, you know, weekly. They're not going to put them all yeah. out at the same time. DC Universe does weekly, and I like that. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. I think that's why like Game of Thrones was so popular because oh, in this age where all these streaming services put them all out at once, you're talking about the show for a week and then it's gone. Mm-hmm. When you put them out weekly, you're talking about each new episode each week yep. to where it makes it last longer. I think it builds up the fan base more oh, too. Oh well, even at that when last last year when uh, Titans came out and they did it weekly episodes. I mean, I, me and you were talking, okay, we're going to watch this one, we're going to rewatch the first one, uh-huh. we're going to rewatch the next one. Yep. So, I mean, it gets you it gets you wanting to watch those episodes even more and see how they're going to change it up okay. or what direction they're going. So, okay, I, I think I've told you this too. The, the episode, I wasn't keen on the, the first episode of the series, mm-hmm. but it got better as it went on. And, of course, the one that hooked me was the Jason Todd episode. Yes. The conversation they had at the end where he's like, I kick ass every night and I fucking love it, you know? Yeah. That, that would really hook me. Is that the episode that hooked you? That is the episode that actually got me like, holy shit, this is a completely different um, portrayal of DC. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we know DC has been dark a little bit, but now with DC Universe, they're actually letting it happen. Yeah. So you saw Jason Todd beating the shit out of everybody. Uh-huh. I mean, you saw them breaking arms. Oh, you yeah. Know, he, they were killing people. people like, yeah. He was legitimately killing people. Going berserker. That right there piqued my interest so much i was like okay let's see what happens yeah and it just got better throughout the throughout mm-hmm. the episodes yeah and okay so then of course the surprise episode for me too was the hawk and dove origin one too where like they they stripped down and yeah. i'm like it was okay it was dark and i've tried to watch it several times but i'm like is she really naked or what no, she's naked 
Okay. Naked. It's you just so dark it. you can't see it very yeah. well. Yeah, is no, what you it can is, see so. it. She's, she's clearly naked. She's not wearing like a nude yeah. like, bra or pants. Yeah. It, but it, they have her ass. That's naked. what I thought. It was just so dark it's hard to see. Yeah. Which, you know, Minka Kelly, I have had. A, she's, I think she's hot since Friday Night Lights. So <laughs> I'm all about that. But, yeah. So, T- Sightings Season 2 coming out Friday, of course, guys. Watch it. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think of Season 1. I was very down on the show when I first saw it, but now, like I said, I enjoyed season one. I'm anxious to see season two. Most definitely. So. I mean, this is going to be based off of the uh, trailer so far. I'm I'm already hooked. Exactly. So, all right, guys. Well, that is it for us today. Of course, time for you to fire back on the social media groups and Gmail account. Let us know what you think about the topics. Joker trailer. What do you think of it? Young Justice Outsiders, what do you think of the season? What are you looking forward to in Season 4? And, of course, Titans Season 2. Let us know what you think is going on there. So, hi, man. I want to thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you letting me be on. Exactly, man. Well, you know, we always love to talk about it. You're a big geek like me. <laughs> One of the few people I can text and be like, hey, did you watch this, like, comic <laughs> book thing yet? You know? Is that's what? Yeah. So, it's always fun to, you know, do that. And I love having a co-host, too. Yeah. Like, Josh used to do this with me, and then he he can couldn't do it anymore. Lisa used to do it with me. She couldn't do it anymore. So I still love bringing on the occasional co-host and stuff like that. Having the rapport. I really enjoy yeah, that too. Definitely. So maybe hopefully you'll come back sometime. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. Cool. All right, guys. Well, that is it for us today. Go out. Enjoy your weekend. And until next time, may the force be with us all.